what's going on, Silent Steppers? It's Miss Ward coming to you from West Florida, headed back over to South Florida. Just want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, 10,000 hours of mastery. I was talking to one of my students this morning and one of my coaching clients. And, you know, I hear this a lot about appliance repair, about the level of frustration people have because they get into it and, you know, they, you know, have a couple of wins and things of that nature. And, you know, a couple of easy wins and somewhere along the line, they think that's how it's going to be the whole time. And then life happens. So you have obstacles, distractions, everything that gets in your way. So I'm going to tell you guys something and I'll tell this to everybody. Do not get into appliance repair thinking it's going to be easy. Um, everything comes to infrastructure structure and processes, but before you even get to the structure and processes, you have to understand what appliance repair is and how to actually repair an appliance. I think that people really overlook the technical aspect because of the influx of YouTube University people. These are people who go to YouTube and just because they can figure out something at home and they're mechanically inclined, they think they got it. What they don't understand, nothing comes easy. I am constantly training myself on a regular basis. Every time I'm in South Florida, I'm in class with Richard Zilka. And the reason I'm in is because I'm constantly working on R600 and things of that nature, or either concepts that I ran into issues in the field, or I don't quite grasp on my own. I am blessed to have a technical support system that I built from scratch. I develop relationships with clients, customers, and mentors. Operative word, mentors. I may not like my mentors all the time. We may have different points of views, but I respect their technical expertise and what they bring to the table and what they've been able to accomplish. Prime example, with my my mentees, I don't expect any of them to like because this ain't even about like because I'm a complete asshole. And I'm clear about that. I own that. But the point is, somebody has to be the asshole in the game. In this day and age, if you're going to get out here and get something and stick, you're going to have to put your foot in somebody's ass. This is a fact. And I hate to say it that way. Part of the problem with our culture is, is everybody's over here, kumbaya, positive energy. Yeah, that's all nice and done. But when you're in a recession, when you're trying to find, feed your family and make decisions so you can eat, not just today, but long term and build generational wealth, you can't have that kind of coach. That's my personal opinion. The only time you can have that kind of coach is if you have so much self-discipline that you can read a book and apply it and apply the principles and, principles and do it on a daily basis. Most people have to be knocked out of their own damn way. They have to be shook in order to move. And then even at that point, if you don't keep doing it, like prime example, I'll be coaching people, I'll give them things to do, and, and, and when I first started doing it, I would call them every day, every morning, I would follow up, I'd give them a task, and then I would ride them till they got those tasks down, to the point people was pissed. But the point is, if you pay me for a service, I'm not only going to make sure you do it, I'm going to make sure you're successful. The problem with that, though, is, is that a lot of these people don't have the self-driving motivation, and it was something that was nice to do, they were interested in, but it's not their passion. Well, guess what? 99% of the shit that people do every day is not their passion. They do it to eat, to make a way. Prime example. You know, I don't expect people to get into appliance repair per, per se to stay, but I do expect you to develop it into a cash flowing business so that whatever in, other interests you have, you can bankroll those interests off of appliance repair if you manage it properly. But you have to have a technical expertise. Prime example. Your ability to repair the appliance in an expeditious manner and write the first time on a one-stop completion, being able to absorb the information from the customer and take the parts you need to do the job and get it done the first time is monumental in your profitability and your ability to turn profit and to expedite to do as many jobs in that day as possible that are profitable. That is going to affect your bottom line. That determines how many days of work you work. Uh, work you put in depending on what your month, daily and weekly goals and monthly goals are but you got to have a plan you can't hit these goals if you don't have a plan or don't understand the process there's plenty of people I know out here working and they parts changing they straight parts changing and they got like a you know 60 50 I mean 60 40 type situation or 50 50 or 40 60 whatever it is but they can't get nowhere near 100 because they refuse 
supposed to learn the appliance. What it is is if they talk to a customer, they think they know what it is, they run out there and do it. They might run out there with a door switch. How many damn door switches you gonna do, bro? How many heating elements you gonna do? When you gonna start learning how to really fix an appliance? But so for some people, that's enough because you know they were accustomed to meager means and meager, meager, meager opportunities. Let them say that. I'm not pushing you to do more than who you, what you really can do. I'm just trying to get you to do the best of what you can do. And see, you can take the minor stuff and really scale it if you put systems in place. Say you only want to do dryers. You know how many gas dryers, electric dryers, and condensation dryers you can make money off of? Not only and also dry bed cleaning. But you got to make a decision, man. Y'all up here pitching pennies. Pennies is not going to get you where you want to go in an expeditious manner. And then if you spend money, you got to be prepared to lose it because that's part of the lessons. I'm going to tell you, as always, what nobody else will. But these are facts. This is what I know to be true. You know, I'm out here balling and making X, Y, and Z, but you better believe there's a cost for this. Time-wise, money-wise, but that's why I have to have so many systems in place that make other things work for me. But that was planned, and I'm constantly planning and fine-tuning the process. Because the more I expand, the more I do, the more I take on, the more responsibility and challenges come with it. If you ain't ready for that, don't do it. Stay in your lane, do what you do, but do that shit well. You know, it's not that hard. But you must put in the hours of mastery. You're going to have to get your technical technical expertise down. Because number one, if you don't know how to fix an appliance, you're going to be throwing parts and you're going to lose your reputation and lose your, uh, you're going to lose your faith in it. I mean, you're going to really be frustrated. We all go through that because we don't understand. But then as you go along and realize, okay, boom, boom, boom. And let me tell you something about appliances. Just in case you don't know, time you think you know what you're doing, there's always one. That will show you that you don't. So you should always be learning. You should always stay up on the latest technology. You should have all the scanners. If you don't have a smart HQ, you're an idiot. I'm going to tell you right now, and I have no problem with telling you that. Because the investment of 250 whatever the module costs, and then the monthly fee, I do the 65 a month, you know. And I do that for a reason, because I'm not going to not have access to information. Like right now, I have a part, the damn unit was built in 2022, and the part is in L.A. I'm like, really? So now I got to do deep dive in, uh, research to find out, is this actually true? This is what I've been told. But at the end of the day, these companies gather more data than you can ever imagine, or you can hold within your hand, in your brain, or your computer. So you need to be able to have access to resources to track down your issues. That way you can complete the job, you know, what to repair, what not to repair, what's on the way out, what's on the way in. Like, for me, strategy is everything. So I need to gather as much data as possible so I can make the best decisions. And this is why you've seen the level of growth I've had at this point the way it is, simply because I'm constantly, it's all about strategy. Nothing else is is, is important to me. How much do I know? How many resources do I have? How profitable is the endeavor? Is this something we should undertake and for how long? That's another thing. You guys don't know when to damn pivot. Most people don't know how to pivot because first of all, they got stuck. You should never be stuck. You should be able to have multiple levels of, multiple streams of income and multiple levels to pivot in this game. And the more you apply yourself, you're going to see, do I want to focus on preventive maintenance? Do I want to focus on installs? Do I want to focus on refrigeration? Do I want to focus on this or that? Let me tell you. I'm going to tell you something right now. There's not enough, enough people that fix dishwashers. How do I know? Because I get unbelievable amount of dishwasher calls. And I'm one of those people, anything that had to do with a liability of possible flood, washer, and dishwasher, I wasn't trying to touch it. You know, and, and some refrigerators, simply because until I got comfortable enough to know what to do and how to do and how to have a pro to have things in place, relationships with plumbers and things like that, that's how I developed my relationship with plumbers and my relation to the other side of my company, you know? So at the end of the day, you got to know how to move. And if you don't know how to move, that ain't on me. That's on you. You got to put in enough work to be able to make the right decisions. Appliance repair is not that business. Now, you got people that, you know, they work for warranty companies. They cherry pick their work. 
and they, you know, they do what they want to do. But what they don't understand is the warranty companies have an algorithm. Cherry pick all you want, but believe me, that algorithm is running that. And they're going to be sending jobs to the person that, in their mind, by their blueprint and by their algorithm, that's going to produce the most results for them. See, this stuff is a game. If you understand that what the chess book board looks like, how are you going to play the game? A lot of y'all don't stay in situations long enough because you put yourself in the center of the world and you think, okay, if this is not benefiting me and what I need, then screw it. Well, you never took the time to learn the system, adapt whatever you need to your system and make it work for you. Shout out to Lamar out in Kentucky with Appliance Professionals. He always talks about how, you know, you got to see, you people can tell you not to use choice, not to use this, not to use that. I don't necessarily, you know, talk about really specific warranty companies simply because I have a warranty company excuse me y'all that I deal with that fits my needs and what my goals and, and desires are um, and, and it suits what I'm doing but like he says he says you gotta find them and make them work in your system so some people do a lot of American Home Shield American Home Shield puts a lot of work out but you better understand their systems to be profitable one of the people at my round table, David from Day Break Appliance Repair, he is a guru in my opinion when it comes to American Home Shield, but he's also a grinder. He grinds like me. He is on the road knocking out jobs and managing his subs to do the same. Now, a lot of people can't multitask like that because their brain don't even move like that. And I'm not knocking nobody. I'm just saying what it is. But at the end of the day, if you want the bag, these are the investments you have to do. You have to get your technical training up. TMM appliance, uh, uh, TMM, excuse me, academics, it's constantly putting on hands-on courses, and they're extremely reasonable. If you know like I know, you get in one. If you want to do a full week, you got Darden, you got the weekend with appliance boot camp, you got Fred's Accounting Academy, you got, and then let's not even talk about Samurai. Master Samurai, you know, they. I think they have one of the best course, but I also understand that you need to be studious as hell. Like, I always tell people, if you're going to do that course, you need to do that course with a group of people, and all y'all need to have study groups so you can really get this shit. Because if you can get through that and really understand, and you got the hands on, you unstoppable. But that means that all that other stuff in your life have to really stop and you really have to be disciplined. The problem with most people is they have no discipline at all. They don't have discipline in their personal life. So how the hell are they going to have discipline in the business? That's all I'm saying. That's enough free game, y'all. It's time for me to get back to the bag. Be blessed. This is Ward signing off. Happy Wednesday. Salute.